Hello, I'm Dave. Welcome to my Technical Notes channel. Hello everyone. In this project I'll show you how you can upload data to your personal weather station hosted on Weather Underground. Here's the concept. You're taking a sensor, different types, using an ESP8266 or an ESP32 to format the data and upload it across the internet to the Weather Underground servers. Here's a more advanced option, and that is to use a sensor, wind sensor, and a wind speed sensor. The ones I've used in that example there are 0 to 5 volts for wind speed, so that's fairly easy to use with an analog read statement and a bit of scaling. And for wind direction, that too is 0 to 5 volts, where 0 to 5 volts is 0 to 359 degrees. So that would be more of an advanced or a full sensor suite and you can also get rain sensors tipping rain bucket uh, rain sensors that give you a count of rain in inches or millimeters i've given some examples there of how they those values would be calculated and read so actually very few lines of code required to actually do this and when you've uploaded your data it will be displayed on a personal weather station in weather underground speak so in, in its simplest sense, this is it. It's an ESP8266 example with a SHT30 sensor, reading values and uploading them to Weather Underground. That's the extent of the hardware. So what is the process? First of all, you need to register at Weather Underground. It takes about five minutes to do that, if, if, if that. You'll get a username and a password and uh, that's instant that's part of the registration process you need to create a personal weather station it takes about two minutes although it can take about 15 minutes to appear on the weather underground map uh, you need to connect an esp32 or an 8266 as what i'm calling a client using some of the di wiring diagrams i've supplied or you stack them using the example I'll, i've already shown you and then use one of my client upload sketches to start uploading the data to the Weather Underground. So here's my uh, iMilksham 8 weather station. It's blue on the map there, currently not showing temperature. That's because I've said that you can set your own status. I said the ESP is uploading normally. It takes a while to upload data, but when you have uploaded data, if you, you'll see a dotted ring around your weather station. It denotes that you're not supplying wind speed or direction. But I'm uploading temperature, humidity and dew point. And I'll cover dew point later. So to add a weather station, go to my weather stations I blanked out the the other stations there add a new weather station it presents you with a map scroll the red dot to your nearest location it's a little bit fiddly i find but relatively easy to do so i'm going to set up a weather station for the city of bath and bath eventually i'll i'll get get it there yeah, it's a little bit temperamental in moving it around. You can zoom right in on the map and get an exact location. I think that will do for the center of Bath. And then next. Enter the weather station details, so I'll say Bath City Centre. Choose the uh, location, if it's on the roof or it's on the ground. Choose the weather station type, I just choose other. And finish you don't need to 
You only need to record in my instance here iBath22. You don't need that key or password. That, that will not work. So here it is. The red dot denotes that it's not yet being uploaded to. You can click on the link. And there it is. This personal weather station is not reporting, but soon will be. And when it is, you'll see it appear on the map. So there's no display apart from the slight delay of the process of generating the weather station on the Weather Underground service. So that will appear. So here's one that I had running earlier, reporting at fairly regular intervals. This is the process for uploading data. It connects to the router, gets an IP address, connects to what's called the Rapid Update server at Weather Underground. It then uses the GET function, HTTP GET, to request an upload. And it's the weather station is ID equals iMilkshire8, which is what they gave to me. The password, that isn't the password. The password is whatever the password you've chosen. The date in UTC is now you can put the time but that's quite complicated temperature in Fahrenheit humidity in percentage dew point temperature in Fahrenheit barometer in inches um, that you're updating raw data and you're doing it in real time true or false and the real time update frequency is every 60 seconds things to note my sketch does all the hard work for you, but it's quite easy and it's quite easy to use. But Weather Underground apply a lot of quality control checking. So if you upload your room temperature for an outside temperature, they won't display the temperature. So if it's actually 12 outside and you upload 20, don't expect your station to be displayed. Similarly for humidity or air pressure, if you're out of the range of everyone else in your area, they will not display your, your station. And I've also found that if you don't conform with the, the norm around you in terms of data, they don't display your station for many hours thereafter. So you must provide a minimum upload of current outside air temperature, outside humidity, and dew point temperature, which is a derived value. You calculate that from temperature and humidity. So I've provided sketches for the DHT range of sensors, the SHT 30, 31, 32, 35, and the BME 280. Um, Weather Underground servers use Amazon web services and so it needs an SSL connection so I've done all that work for you. The Weather Underground API does apply very strict controls on the uh, GET request so if you modify the request in any way don't be surprised if it doesn't work because it's very very stringent. I spent a long time getting that exactly right. Date time is is a, is a little bit more complicated than normal, but there's an example there. 2018-04-30-10-32 becomes what's called a URL escape format. So you have to correctly format, and the function in the client does all that for you. These are some of the values that you can uh, upload, and there are many of them. There's lots of... Um, additional ones for air quality, etc. So if you're using a BME 680, you could add to the upload capability. Uh, typical ones are wind direction, wind speed, dew point, heat index, uh, amount of rainfall, etc. So they're all in the program, they're all in the client programs, and you have to uncomment the ones you want to upload and obviously give them some values as they get included in the upload process. I think that's fairly self-evident in the program examples I've given. 
My preference is to always use date time equals now rather than calculate the current time because you just have to send the word now and it, they, they assign the date of reception, date and time of reception for the data. In terms of circuitry, it's relatively straightforward. It's the I2C bus. Here's an example using a Lowland 32, ESP32. They won't last very long, so you do need to use an external sensor or one where you can stick on a microfilter and they're reasonably easy to get hold of. You do have to look around. So that's a air molecule permeable filter but not water permeable so that keeps the sensor in uh, working order if you get the ones with the filter built around them like the, the example there the external use sht30 obviously they can go out without any modification here's the same thing using the Lolin 32 light is another example using the stackable shields for the Wemos D1 Mini, the ESP8266. And so there's very little work to do with that wiring. Don't forget to fit a micro filter. Here's a BME 280 version could wire a prototype board for the Wemos D1 Mini so it's a stackable unit. Um, and don't forget to fit a micro filter on top of the um, BME 280 there. And that's the only part that should be exposed to the environment. So in summary then you can create your own free weather underground personal weather station as PWS as they call it. You can upload your own sensor data and have it displayed on the Weather Underground Weather Station map. You can use internal indoors temperature and humidity, but the only way I've seen of displaying that is on an iPad, is on the iPad application. You do need to use external grade sensors or fit micro filters to any exposed sensor elements. Uh, I've given you uh, upload clients for most of the popular sensors and uh, the DHT1122, SHT3031, 33 and 35 and the BME280. Extending those I think is relatively straightforward. Weather Underground applies those strict quality control checks so don't be disappointed if you know you make a mistake and you upload your lab or your room temperatures and humidities and, and your weather station doesn't get displayed. It will come on eventually if you're sending data that is within the expected range for your current area. Adding wind speed and direction sensors, uh, relatively easy. Both the sensors I found on AliExpress, and I'll put the links in the description, give 0 to 5 volt output. And therefore they can be read with an analogue read statement and then scaled accordingly. And I've given examples there in the slides of the scaling needed. And overall then that gives you the ability to create your own personal weather station from your sensors feeding the world wide web of uh, weather stations that, uh, of many millions that seem to exist around the world. Hope you find the code and the examples useful and please enjoy it. I hope you found this technical note interesting and useful. 